Um, so there's a game at 11 and a game at 6.30. Okay. The, so there's a good window. Basically. Yeah, the 11 one I'd be able to make. Not 6.30. 6.30 because I have to, well, uh, I have to get back and have to change because then I have to go over to Philly at 11.30. 11.30 p.m. Now, yeah. Well, someone decides to get the flight is good. Mm -hmm. That's real. Yeah. Where are you headed? Well, I'm not heading. Oh, you're. I have the pick. I have the picks. Okay. At 11:30 at night. From, gotcha. <laughs> I don't know when I'm getting home, but. A Saturday late night. I don't know how bad it would be, but. All right, you almost ready? Yep. All right, we're live, and you can start the intro when you're ready. Just count me down from five. Oh my actual eyesight is there the high drive deep center go 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 we're out of here we're out of here say a player just like they drew it up in hollywood caladros the three two swing and a miss and the autobahn green wave have upset the kingsway dragons and this is it for good the autobahn green All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to DW Broadcasting's coverage of Men Marching From our entire crew, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one, folks. We are live from one of the best weekends in South Jersey. This is my seventh game since 9 a.m. Friday morning. And oh boy, I'm gonna be great for a nap after this one, but there is no time to sleep right now. There is only time for quality South Jersey baseball between the Kingsway Dragons and the Audubon Green Wave. You might remember this is the third year in a row in the 27th annual Ralph Shaw Classic dating back to 2022 that we have seen these two teams square off in the championship game. Last year, this was basically a copy-paste of what we see this year. Bishop Eustace and Sinemitzen in the consolation game, and Kingsway and Audubon in the championship game. And the result may just be the same. Bishop Eustace Mercy ruled Sinemitzen in 13-2 in the consolation third place game, and Audubon poised for a great season again in 2024 with the brand new bright yellow uniforms. They're not worried about what they're wearing, they're worried about what they're wearing on their sleeve because right now, Audubon is looking to shock the world again. They beat Kingsway 7-6 last year after a 6-1 comeback late in the game. Nick Caladros had the save and got the strikeout of the last man in the order for Kingsway with a 3-2, two-out pitch with the bases loaded and the tying run just 90 feet away. Last year was a, was a success story and a historic game that even Hollywood couldn't have scripted any better. Two years ago wasn't so nice to Audubon. A 7-2 final for Kingsway gave them their first Ralph Shaw title. And now in 2024, Kingsway is looking to make it number two. They're looking to defeat Audubon on their home turf, this time writing the course of last year's events. Ryan Zimmer, the 11 inning junior from last year, now a class of 2024 senior, getting the start in what is already the most penultimate game of the season so far, and we're only in game two. We're probably not gonna see a more intense game until at least the end of the month. So Audubon is ready to go. They are excited. I've been talking to these guys all weekend. There is a different vibe in the clubhouse. These guys are ready to go, they're ready to pounce, and they're ready to make an impact. And Kingsway, they feel the same way. They want a remedy from last year. They traveled from 25 minutes away to get here. They don't want to go home empty-handed. They don't want to go home with that silver medal, and instead, they'll trade it for a gold. The starter, Killian McCaffrey, for Kingsway this afternoon, getting his first start of the campaign as Kingsway looks to continue their run and go 2-0 on the young season. We'll give you starting lineups and introductions and our first pitch right after this break. We'll be right back, folks. Good. That was a good intro. Yeah. I like that. I felt I got a little more creative with that, you know? Well, especially with the, it is not time to sleep yet. Yeah. Well, that was the start. That was just the spark. That's the spark. What do you think was your best intro that you've done? I, I know it's kind of all the ones I've done. That's why I said it's probably going to work too. And 
they are doing the national anthem. Do you want to broadcast that or no? No. Oh, wait, no, yeah, you said it's copied. It's that. copyrighted. Yeah. Fails that to do that job. Drive a scrape the uh, infield. In life, the road ahead is full of possibilities, but to navigate it safely, you need the right skills. Harper Driving School is the premier driving school serving Gloucester, Salem, and Camden counties. With experienced instructors, many of whom are teachers in local schools, we are dedicated to your success and will help you master the road with confidence. With an over 95% success rate of students passing their road test on their first try, you know your student will be in good hands while embarking on a huge step of their young adult lives, all while avoiding the lines at the DMV and getting insurance discounts. We chose Harper and so should you.
is Gloucester Catholic with 20, but they're a non-public school, so that's why we have to make that distinction. Ryan Zimmer on the hill for the Audubon Green Wave, but first, Bill Alvaro trots out his start. Way Dragon. Let's take a look at Kingsway's starting lineup, brought to you by Tommy D's Home Improvement. Your first three is going to be Logan Taylor, Gavin McCaffrey, and Tommy Popoff at short, center, and catcher, respectively. Ian Monteith in right field batting cleanup. Nate Bott is the third baseman batting fifth. Kyle Cupsey takes first base batting sixth. Dylan Rickards, the hero in the first round game with a two-run double in the bottom of the seventh to tie the game. He bats in the seventh spot at the DH. Rounding out the order was the penultimate hero from game one who delivered that walk-off bunt single in the bottom of the seventh, Zach Bray. He takes over and left batting eighth. Braden Thorpe is the second baseman batting in the ninth position. But Ryan Zimmer goes from behind the backstop to in front of the hill here in his 2024 senior debut. Gabe McCracken who had a sub one ERA last year as a junior. He threw five strong versus Cinnaminson in game one. But now you don't have to worry about the Pirates. You've got to worry about the next best thing. The Dragons. Ryan Zimmer, the senior right-hander, 3.11 ERA last year, 14 strikeouts, five hits allowed in nine innings, four earned runs, and two hit batsmen. Now for his first appearance of 2024, his first task is Logan Taylor. Here in the beautiful Sunday afternoon here at Hank Greenberg Field, the first pitch of the championship title game is underway, and it's a strike. Taylor, McCaffrey, and Popoff, the same starting three from yesterday's game versus Bishop Eustis. There's a hot shot. That's a foul ball. 0-2. Oh and, and, of course, the media out with their bright stars. Chris Baker, Colin Conway are here. There's Gloucester Catholic assistant coach Bill Gore, Clearview head coach Nick Core, and, of course, the star of the show whenever he appears, Kevin Minnick behind the dish. Taylor takes outside. Two and two. That'll be ball four. And Taylor gets a leadoff walk for the Dragons. Here's Gavin McCaffrey. Swing and a miss, hefty hack there, 0-1. Kingsway's first win came on Friday in a 10-0 mercy roll win over Williamstown. Took that game in five innings with a three spot in the second and a three spot in the fifth and a four run third inning. In fact, they did it all on eight singles. That throw gets away past Connor Chester down the first base line. And on the error, Taylor advances to second. So that puts Kingsway in business with a runner in scoring position. So this is their third game in three days. Williamstown on Friday, Bishop Eustis on Saturday, and now Audubon, three drastically different teams with three drastically different styles of play. McCaffrey, five foot seven senior outfielder with quite a crouch stance to boot. Breaking ball at the letters. It's called a strike. It's 0 and 2. A career 247 average. 224 was his mark in 2023 as a junior. 11 singles, 13 hits all told. 13 for 58 with 16 runs scored. There's a swing and a miss. Ryan Zimmer gets his first punch out of the Shaw, and there's two away. Or rather, one away, sorry. Getting a little ahead of myself. That's how excited we are. Here's Tommy Pop. Kingsway kind of had a dilemma at the catching position after this uh, 2023 campaign. Braden Lipoff transferred from Kingsway to Gloucester Catholic, and he regained eligibility there. So Popoff, for now, 
is the go-to guy. I mean, Popoff was always the starter for Kingsway as far as we knew, you know, from what we had covered out of the Dragons the last couple of years. But the difference was is that it was pretty assumed that with Popoff being a senior, class of 24, that window can close really fast. And you had Lipoff basically waiting in the wings, but that threw a big wrench in their plans with Lipoff leaving and going to Gloucester Catholic. Three balls, one strike. That first base is unoccupied, but a bit of control issues early for Zimmer. Ground ball out to third. Wiltsy cuts him off, and he's not gonna have a play. That's an infield single for Tommy Popoff. The runner did hold it second, so Taylor will not advance. It does just occupy that first base after the infield knock. So a walk, a strikeout, and a single puts Kingsway with two runners on and one away for the cleanup man, Ian Monteith. But right now, you know, you've got Tommy Popoff, the main catcher, and the only other catcher that's rostered on NJ.com is Tegan Gillard, a five foot eight junior who has not made any varsity appearances in any prior season or in this season yet. So Popoff is their man, but it would have been a little nicer to have Lipoff there because think about it this way. You have a class of 26 guy, you still have his junior and senior years for him to develop. You've got two full seasons of basically guaranteed dominance behind the plate because Popoff is a great hitter, you know, in his own right. And Lipoff is his great hitter in his own right. But now that they've parted ways, that gives Bill Alvaro a little bit of a shorter window to actually develop a new catcher after Popoff graduates this June. There's a swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes to Ian Monteith. The senior right fielder with a 361 average in his first varsity season last year. Five extra base hits, 22 for 61. And before the 2-2, Bannell and Zimmer go to talk this one over. Your defensive lineup for the Audubon Green Wave tonight, Bannell behind the dish, Zimmer on the hill, and the infield freshman first baseman, Connor Chester, Jack Dempsey at second base, Tyler Wiltsey at short, Nick Caladros at third, and in the outfield from left to right, Jason Stocklin in left, Charlie Copsetta in center, and Bryce Dempsey in right. Two balls, two strikes, one away, and two runners on, one in scoring position here, and that's strike three right down the pipe, and Zimmer has strikeout number two. After the strikeout for Monteith, here is batter number five, Nate Bott. Bott, the six foot one sophomore, 357 average as a freshman. Two extra base hits of each variety, two doubles, two triples, four walks, five hit by pitches, and a 10 for 28 mark, but a, a very impressive as a freshman 571 slugging percentage. That one misses. 1-1. One, one. Kingsway looking to get on the board first as they did last year. But this was very similar to last year, you know. Kingsway got a 6-1 lead and then Audubon chipped their way back. It's not like they hit a grand slam and everything was new and sunshine and rainbows again. They had to claw their way back into the game. Zimmer steps off. Logan Taylor on second. And after the base hit, Now you got two runners on, that ball skips away from Bannell. He doesn't know where the ball is, and now both runners advance. Pinch running for the catcher, Tommy Popoff, who got that base hit, is now Cam Stevenson. If my memory serves me right, Gavin McCaffrey did used to wear number two, so that threw me off in terms of, <laughs> in terms of I was like, wait a second, why is McCaffrey on second base? But then I realized it's Cam Stevenson out there. So, you know, we were talking about in the first game of this uh, doubleheader that, you know, there's there's pros and cons to broadcasting in the outfield. I personally like it more because it gives a more natural vibe. You know, I can kind of talk here a little freely. I mean, the only person that could really hear me in the field is the right fielder if I if I if I talked loud enough. But 
you know, when you're when you're right behind the plate, you have to be a lot more mindful of what you say because the dugouts can hear you, the coaches can hear you, the umpires can hear you. And there's a swing and a miss. Trent Bannell is pumped, and so are the rest of the guys in that green and gold diamond. We go to the bottom of the first. Kingsway leaves two on. We'll be right back. Tyler Wiltsey is the first to step in versus Killian McCaffrey, the right-handed starter for Kingsway. The first pitch is inside 1-0. Let's take a look at that Audubon starting lineup presented to you by Tommy D's Home Improvement. Your first three are the same as it was yesterday. Tyler Wiltsey at short. Trent Bennell not in right field, but instead behind the plate. Ryan Zimmer is the pitcher batting third. You've got yourself Lance Furness at the DH spot. Nick Caladros at third, Jack Dempsey at second base, Bryce Dempsey in right. The Camden County College commit, shout out John Scanzano for watching at home. Center fielder Charlie Capsetta in the eighth spot, batting in center, or rather in center field. And then the freshman first baseman, Connor Chester, rounding out the order. Wiltsey fouls it back. And it is two and two. Also got to note that right fielder Ian Monteith for Kingsway is also a Camden County commit. Happy to be working with the Cougars, and don't forget we'll be there for a nine-inning game on Friday, April 12th, versus Ocean County and the Vikings. I don't think there were a lot of Vikings down the Jersey Shore. I don't think there were. Just like there's not a lot of green waves in Audubon unless there was a terrible, terrible flood in the Chicago River. 3-2, foul. Deep onto Walnut Street, and that actually, wow. That actually hit a pedestrian that was walking down the street all the way towards the 320 sign. So it had home run distance, and unfortunately, some fella is the collateral damage. Fouled back, and Wiltsey stays alive. Wiltsey has been kind of hybriding in and out between short and center this year. Played center field on a couple of the scrimmages, but it seems like that Copseta is going to remain in his post in center as a senior, and maybe in 2025 they might move him into the eight spot. Line drive out to third, picked up by Bach, throw across the diamond, and time one away. Here's Trent Bannell. You know, we were talking about last night the fact that Bannell is, is just your rah rah guy. You know, you don't care if he only gives you singles, you don't care if he barely gives you any RBIs. And I'm not saying he doesn't do that because he is a productive hitter, but he is just all energy. I don't know what he drinks in the morning, but it's got to be something special. Nate Bott throws from the seat of his pants. He can't get there. It's an infield single. On the first pitch, Trent Bennell grounded one right down the third base line off the white chalk. Nate Bott fell down, tried to corral it, and it's going to be an infield single to get Bannell started. 
Now we turn it over to Ryan Zimmer, the number three hitter and pitcher this afternoon. I think Bott just had a little trouble bringing that one in. Not going to be scored as an error in our book. Remember, my scorekeeping is not official. In fact, the man who does keep the official score over in the dugout there, Coach Grimbo, hiding behind the iPad in the second row. Dylan Tassie down there as well. Great crew of coaching for the Green Wave as that one's up and in, 2-0. Two balls, no strikes to Zimmer. Took one inside. Now they throw behind the runner, and he is safe. Some of the red and black didn't agree with that one, but no harm, no foul. And luckily for Kingsway, that didn't result in an extra base because, I mean, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You really have to know what you're doing as a catcher, especially at this level of high school, to throw behind the runner. Because honestly, in this situation, bottom of the first, that's high reward, but also high risk. You know, yeah, you can get the runner out, but it'll be a very, very different, you know, game plan and a play call if that was later on in the game. Zimmer Rockets went out towards straightaway right. Monteith backtracks and he makes the catch. Two down. Here is Lance Furness in Audubon's 9-3 win over Cinnaminson yesterday in the opening round. He drove in two RBIs. He actually got our player of the game interview. Went two for four, knocked in two runs early and helped Audubon with their momentum that they needed to secure that championship slot. With two outs now, the catcher battle will be pinch run four by. Let's see who emerges from the dugout. Looks like Jason Stockland. Actually, that is number 12, Tommy Quinn. The junior outfielder who has dabbled in pinch running the past couple of years. Here's Nick Caladro, uh, rather, no, excuse me, Lance Furness. Caladros, though, if the inning were to continue, is on deck, 0-1. So with Quinn now running at first, they're looking to get an early impact off of Killian McCaffrey. Fouls this one back. He got good contact on it. And that one goes to Walnut. Somebody's uh, front yard gets a little divot. But Lance has been barreling, barreling the balls up. I mean, he didn't get a lot of playing time last year. And now he's got himself a good slot in this cleanup position. Ball is outside. The throw is going to be way high at airmail second base. Goes into center. Quinn holds. And he will get second base on the wild throw. That's dangerous. I mean, you know, Quinn could have run the third. I think he would have gotten in there if he went. But in the first inning, they wanted to keep it as cautious as possible. And you don't want to run into early mistakes that, you know, take a lot of wind out of your sails. It's two balls, two strikes with two outs, a runner in scoring position, and Audubon looking to get their first run of the afternoon here in day two of the Ralph Shaw. McCaffrey looks over at second. Taylor fakes, and that one's up high, 3-2. As we said, third baseman Nick Caladros is on deck if the inning were to continue. Foul. Count is full. McCaffrey already over the 20 pitch mark in the first. Zimmer ended his first inning with 23. But you also have to wonder, is Bannell going to be behind the plate for all seven innings? Or once Zimmer's done, are they going to do a swap? I mean, Bannell's not going to pitch, but you do a couple changes. Maybe you put Dempsey on the mound, move Zimmer from the pitcher to the catcher slot, and move Bannell from the catcher slot to right field. It could just be a triangle of change if that's what they choose to do if they put Dempsey in. Furness stays alive again. That one almost hit a car, too. Man, these Audubon batters, they're, they're going to have a couple bills in the mail come Monday. 
But a packed house here in Audubon, getting even more packed by the minute here. And talk about a valuable at bat. He didn't get the barrel on the ball for one that went fair, but Lance Furness works him for an, a nine pitch at bat. And he works the walk. That's excellent right there, you know. A guy who didn't have that much experience going into this year. An at bat on the biggest stage. And he works himself a walk in the first inning. That occupies first base now for Caladros. Two on, two out. First pitch grounded out to short. This will take care of the situation. It's bobbled at second base, but Taylor miraculously hangs on to the bag with the ball in hand. Audubon leaves two runners on, and we end the first scoreless. We'll be right back here at Hank Greenberg Field in the Ralph Shaw Championship. All right, top of the second inning, Ryan Zimmer in for his second frame of work versus Kingsway. There's the strike. Gonna have to have somebody get the message down to John Stockland that I uh, would like a Gatorade up here in the booth. I can give him cash or I can Venmo him. I ran out of uh, vitamin water around the middle of game one. <laughs> There's a fly ball, country mile high. Wiltsy goes for it, and that one is headed for the trees, foul ball. Two strike count now to Kingsway. Six, seven, and eight are the batters due up here for the Dragons. Kyle Cupsey, Dylan Rickards, the hero in the opening round of this Shaw tournament and Zach Bragg, the left fielder, who finished the job and got that walk-off bunt to beat Bishop Eustis in the first round for the third straight year. He pokes this one down the right field line, and that is a foul ball. Slider misses. Two and two. Three balls, two strikes. Zimmer on the hill last year. Again, at nine innings in four appearances. And that one misses. Had four starts, including two innings versus Haddon Heights, two innings versus Collingswood, three versus Gateway, and two versus Paulsboro. So this is his first career start against a non-conference opponent. Unfortunately for Audubon though, he seems to have some somewhat of a bad luck um, string attached to him because they have lost three of the four games that he appeared in. 
but a lot of it wasn't his fault. He pitched two innings versus Haddon Heights in April of this past year. Didn't give up any earned runs, but Audubon lost that game 3-2. Gave up three earned runs in an 11-2 loss versus Collingswood. As there's a ground ball. wiltsy has got it, tags the bag himself, and the throw airmails first base. It hits the grill. There's going to be some jumbled hamburgers down the first base line, and that is going to be Rickards getting the second base on a two-base error. That one hit. No, they were they were still flipping burgers on the grill. I think it hit off the uh, either off the grill or it looked like the cooler maybe down there. So they tried turning two. But instead they only get one and instead now Rickards is on second base after the error. Hit out towards short. Wiltsy goes for the lead runner and he got him. A dangerous play and it ends up hurting Caladros. Wiltsy went for the throw to get the lead runner so that they would only have the runner on first and it was successful. But an unfortunate string of events over at third. And now Liam Corbel is attending to Caladros, who is laying flat on his back. Or actually, he's, he's laying on his stomach, but still. So an injury timeout for Nick Caladros. He must have gotten hit hard. Take a look at that replay. Oh, it looks like that was the wrong one. My apologies, but I don't know. I guess ours didn't save, but. Caladros is going to stay in the game. He was checked out by athletic trainer Liam Corbel. And after a bit of a scare, a 6-5 ground out will now bring up Thorpe at the bottom of the order. So two outs, and for the bottom of the order, that's foul. Braden Thorpe to be followed in the top of the order by Logan Taylor. There's a swing and a miss. Zimmer had three strikeouts in the first. Now with none in the second, but has gotten two outs in rather unusual ways. That one skips away, and Bannell tracks the ball down the first baseline. Well, was, well, wait a second, yeah, he started walking back to first base. But no, 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 you're in there. So that's a wild pitch advancement for Bragg. Kingsway and Audubon deadlocked at zero here in the top of the second. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and two on. That one misses. 3-2. Zimmer up to 34 pitches here early in the game as he looks to get out of the jam now. With that man on second. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. Swing and a foul. So Bragg will return to sender. Count remains full.
Zimmer will try it again. Looks back at second. From the stretch. Got him! Strikeout number four, Ryan Zimmer takes care of business and leaves that runner on. One and a half through here at Audubon, no score. Tommy D's Home Design Center has opened a second location on Creek Road in Belmar. Operating in Philadelphia for over 25 years and now expanding into South Jersey, Tommy D's is the place to go for kitchen cabinets, countertops, and cabinet accessories, heavily discounted compared to big box retailers. Stop in, take a seat, and watch as our experienced kitchen designer makes the kitchen of your dreams right in front of you. Tommy D's is the best in the business for quality kitchen countertops and cabinets that fit all budgets. Call us today at 856-210-9504 or visit the new location in person on the corner of Creek Road and Harding Avenue in Belmar next to the 42 on-ramp. There's Rich Horan sitting in his dugout, and we are ready to go in the bottom of the second inning versus Killian McCaffrey. First pitch, Dempsey, grounds at the third, Bot in time. One down. Good. Here's Bryce Dempsey, had 11 singles last year and a plus 300 average. 1-0. Oh. That one misses, and it's 3-0. Pop off from McCaffrey, we'll talk this one over. Dempsey hits this one out towards short. Taylor's throw in time, two down. Taking care of business here, and Kingsway is rocking and rolling. So here is the lefty and Camden County commit, Charlie Capsetta. So two straight ground outs, and Kingsway looking to have a smooth second frame here. That one's high and away. 1-0. Copsetta, he'll be followed up by Chester, the freshman first baseman, to round out the frame, or round out the order, rather. That one also skips in, 2-0. There's a strike on a raging fastball. Killian McCaffrey, the junior pitcher, 5'10", 155, 7.5 ERA last year in 4.2 innings, five earned runs with as many walks and two strikeouts. And that was in an even small sample size of three games 
versus some monster teams. Bishop Eustis in the Shaw on April 15th of last year. That was the game that Kingsway came back seven runs down late and won 10-9. He appeared St. Augustine in a 4-2 loss on April 20th and versus GCIT when they had their incredible run in early May with Rob Epolite, the head coach there. Capseta pops this one up. Got a good barrel on it, but McCaffrey gets it done and he makes the catch in center field. Audubon goes down in order. We're two frames through and the smoke is billowing high from John Stockland's grill. We'll be right back. No score after two. Garden State Pet Center is an independently owned full service pet store. Our specialty is promoting companionship between people and animals by providing the healthiest product choices available, including all natural foods, supplements that support and relieve health issues, and innovative products for pet parents. Our goal is to provide our customers with a relaxing environment, and while we're not striving to be the biggest store on the East Coast, we're striving to be the best. No other pet store will make you feel at home like we do. At Garden State Pet Center, we view pets as members of the family. We don't believe in fast, high pressure sales but instead matching up the right pet with the right owners as you are making a lifelong commitment. Together with our team members, we would like your visit to our store to be both enjoyable and educational. Simply drop in and take a look around. View the birds, reptiles, small animals, toys, food, cages, and miscellaneous items. Learn of the services we have to offer and decide for yourself if this is the store you'd like to call your home away from home. Victor Santucci, owner of Garden State Pet Center. Visit us today at 226 South Whitehorse Pike in Audubon, New Jersey. We're open seven days a week for all of your pets' needs. top of the third this broadcast is brought to you by harper driving school drive into success today by booking your road test with harper over 95 percent of students pass their road test on their first try with harper visit today at suite four of the total turf experience in Pittman, right off of lambs road logan taylor the leadoff man for kingsway gets another shot here in the third He walked his first time, got stranded in scoring position, and so in two. Taylor's got a base hit. Knocks it in the left, and Stockland is there. And here's Gavin McCaffrey to center fielder. Foul ball down the right field line. Ooh. Oh, that one hit the top of the truck. Oh. <laughs> sounded like a gunshot. Runner goes, throw to second base is not going to be in time. The throw is luckily stopped by Wiltsy. Strikeout number five for Zimmer, and it comes at the hands of McCaffrey. Here's Tommy Popoff. One away and a runner on second as Kingsway looks to get their first run on the board. Now the runner goes. Bannell does not have a throw, and he gets in there uncontested. Stolen base for Taylor. Popped up, first base side. Chester goes after it. Look out again. 
That one got stuck in the tree down there. They're just trying to cook burgers in peace. They're trying to get a couple hot dogs on the grill without being bombarded. Like they're in a war zone. It's 0 and 2. Outside. Game today started around 20 minutes behind schedule. Looks like we got started here around 3.20 in the afternoon. Not that Eustace and Cinnamonson ran long in any way. It just seemed like the prep time to get the field in the right shape took a little longer than usual. Pokes this one out towards right, and there you go. There's your first run. Kingsway's got it on an RBI single by Tommy Popoff, and it's 1-0 Dragons. That's the old classic floater. Get it right over the infielder's head. You don't have to do anything fancy with it. Knock it the other way and drive them in. I mean, you know, Popoff hitting in the middle of the order, obviously. A good hitter at all parts of the baseball. Two career high school home runs, one in each of his sophomore and junior years. But he didn't need to homer that time. He just needed to drive him in. Cam Stevenson running for him at first. Upstairs. So Tommy Popoff has been a good anchor for this Kingsway offense, two for two with two singles. And now one of them is an RBI. Foul. One ball, one strike, one out, and one on in a one-nothing Kingsway lead here at the top of the third. Zimmer delivers, fastball high, Bannel pump faked to first but nothing more, two and one. I mean, Zimmer's, Zimmer's been doing good out there. You know, five strikeouts obviously has been the key number to watch, but it's not like he's been entirely wild either. You know, Kingsway's just been hitting the bat to the ball and they've been doing what they needed to do. They didn't have to wait for that opportunity to come into their lap. They had to work for it. And Zimmer's just right now getting the short end of the stick, even though it's only a one run game. But that time it's ball four. Monteith. The Camden County commit walks. He reaches base for the first time tonight. Stevenson to second. And here is Nate Bott with only one down. Wade Geis, Audubon's pitching coach, coming out to talk with Zimmer. Josh Nolan, the junior right-hander, is warming up in the Audubon bullpen. So he'll attack again versus Nate Bott. Swing, that's so and one. Audubon will lead it off with Chester, Wiltsy, and Bantle at the bottom of the third. Kingsway has put one run on the board, and they're going to look for more right here. But a swing and a miss sets them back to and two. Still only one out though, so they're they're in business. You know, they're they're trying to replicate what they did last year, but cut it off right at the point where Audubon comes back. You know, they, they want to put runs up on the board, as they have the past two years, scored seven runs in 2022, scored six more in 2023, but a swing and a miss, strikeout number six for Ryan Zimmer. It's two down. So Bont strikes out for the second time, 
And now it's Kyle Cupsey, the first baseman, who grabs the bat. Stevenson on second, the pinch runner for Popoff, and Monteith on first base. 1-0. Zimmer right now already, if my eyes are not deceiving me, he's already over 60 pitches. Let's take a look. Let's make sure that's right. Yeah, that looks like a 68 right there. His pitch count has been really high, and that's probably why Nolan's warming up right now. Not because Zimmer's doing bad, but he's worked almost every at-bat to the bone. You know, there's been a lot of three balls, a lot of two strikes, a lot of full counts. And that's great if you get the outs. But just know that your time out there is going to be truncated a little bit just because you don't have that much in you. And you can only throw, by state rules, 110 pitches in a five-day five span. There's a ground ball, skips off of Zimmer. Dempsey with a quick feed to second, and they got him there. So a bang-bang play, but Monteith is retired, and the inning is over. Kingsway gets one on the board and leaves two on. We go to the bottom of the third. One-nothing visitors. Bottom of the third inning here at Audubon. It's going to be your nine-hole hitter, followed by the one and the two. Chester, Wiltsey, and Bantle are your slated hitters here in the third. As Zimmer's final line, 69 pitches after three innings. Uh, excuse me, after three innings. That was pitch number 35 for Killian McCaffrey. I mean, you know, one of the things that Kingsway is going to want to pounce on is the fact that Audubon is probably going to throw out a couple of relievers that don't have veteran experience. You know, Josh Nolan, he has improved a lot over the offseason, but Kingsway doesn't know that yet. You know, I don't think that they've looked over the tape, but, you know, he's improved. But have they improved in his eyes or in their eyes? We don't know yet. Chester strikes out, still looking for his first varsity hit after an offer last night versus Cinnaminson, and there's one away for Tyler Wilson. Rounded out to third his first time. Strike one. Kingsway leads by one as we get into the middle innings as Bot couldn't get there, took an awkward hop. And Tyler Wilty's got a knock. So Tyler Wiltsey gets a one-out single to bring up Trent Bannell, the catcher. Bannell singled his first time, but did not score. There's another one, 0-1. Trent Bennell went one for three with an RBI single versus Cinnaminson yesterday in a 9-3 win. Throw back to first, not in time. But as both of these pitchers' counts go up, and this game's probably gonna be a, a full bullpen game 
by the fifth at the, at the latest, probably. Here comes the throw down a second. That beat him, and he got him. Big play there is Tyler Wiltsy was the victim of a Tommy pop-off sub two pop time. And there's two down quickly. Poked out towards shallow right. Monteith is there and the side is retired. Kingsway's rocking and rolling. We'll see if they can keep it up in the fourth. One nothing. In life, the road ahead is full of possibilities, but to navigate it safely, you need the right skills. Harper Driving School is the premier driving school serving Gloucester, Salem, and Camden counties. With experienced instructors, many of whom are teachers in local schools, we are dedicated to your success and will help you master the road with confidence. With an over 95% success rate of students passing their road test on their first try, you know your student will be in good hands while embarking on a huge step of their young adult lives, all while avoiding the lines at the DMV and getting insurance discounts. We chose Harper and so should you. Here at the beautiful Hank Greenberg Field, it is time for DWB Trivia Time. Today's question is the Montreal Expos. Remember them? They moved to Washington, D.C. and became the Nationals in what year? Your options are 2005, 1999, 2012, and 1992. The answer will be revealed in the bottom of the fourth inning. Josh Nolan, the new pitcher on the hill for Audubon. A couple of changes. Zimmer now in right field. This is a, an oddity if I've ever seen one. I, he's usually not out here. He's usually not out in our area. Ground ball out to short. Wiltsy is there, scoops it, throw to first. He is a little high, and he got pulled off the bag. So that'll be a wild throw by, by Wiltsy. And because he got pulled off the bag, that'll be an E6, his second of the game. So Rickards gets on, and now here is Zach Bragg. Reached on a 6-5 fielder's choice. That ball is dropped by Bannel. And it's not like the wind has been that big of a factor for those, you know, wild throws either. But Audubon's taking advantage of them. Actually, Kingsway has been the one taking advantage of it. But 43 pitches for McCaffrey after the third. Josh Nolan settling in here versus the bottom of the order, 7, 8, and 9. Rickards on first, Bragg at the dish, and Thorpe on deck. Swing and a miss, one and two. Pitch from Nolan, up high, two and two. 
had a one flat ERA in seven innings last year. Threw under 100 pitches in, 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 excuse me, in his entire sophomore year. Gave up one earned run, six walks, and four strikeouts. He was a very good short-term relief option. Threw one and a third versus St. Augustine. Hold them scoreless. One uh, got the save versus uh, Bordentown. Just one inning there. Um, pitched not an inning, but just five pitches versus Haddon Township in their 2-1, nine-inning win on May the 2nd of last year. Line drive in the center field. That's going to be a base hit. Copset is going to let this go. He fumbles it in center field. Rickards going to third and settling into second base with a no-out double. Zach Brague. And now it goes over to the number nine hitter, Braden Thorpe, with the leadoff man, Logan Taylor, on deck. Outfield playing a little deeper. With Josh Nolan in trouble, two runners in scoring position. There's a strike. Nolan appeared in the season opener versus Cinnaminson. Pitched one inning, gave up one hit, which ended up being an earned run, but also got a strikeout. So he's actually only thrown 113 pitches in his high school career leading into today. But as we said, Kingsway is, is ready to pounce on these guys that they haven't seen before. You know, it's almost like blind is better. You know, they are, they are very familiar with Zimmer, they're familiar with McCracken, they're familiar with the guys that they faced last year. But they didn't face Josh Nolan last year. He didn't even make his first varsity appearance until the last week of April. So he spent the first three weeks kind of in and out of limbo. You know, they put him at like third base for a game, they put him in the outfield for a game, and they put him at first base a couple times too. But he's a versatile corner infielder, but he can also give you a good fastball to work with. It just depends on how Kingsway is going to utilize it. And they're going to utilize it well, but Wiltsy with a nice leaping catch at short to get the first out. That was a beautiful play in the infield, especially with that shortened reaction time with the infield playing in. They continue to play in here with runners on second and third after the Thorpe lineout. Here's Logan Taylor. Taylor has reached base twice, had a walk in the first and a single in the third. Tommy Popoff has had Kingsway's only RBI. He's two for two today. Nolan's still working the pitch. Wide out to right. Zimmer took a bad step, and that gets over his head. Two runs are going to score. Thorpe is going to round third. Scoring is Rickards. The throw to the plate is going to beat him, and he is safe. The throw got bobbled at home plate, and it is a two-run triple for Logan Taylor. 3-0 Kingsway. The ball just got over his head, and... And now a big, big exclamation point on this inning as Wade Geis will come and talk to Nolan. So Taylor two for two, a walk, a single, and a triple. He has been red hot tonight. Nolan is out after giving up two runs. And we've got a new man coming into the game. This is a pitching change. Looks like it's going to be Jason Stockland, the lefty. We'll be right back after this.
Audubon puts out another pitcher on the hill, number eight. It's going to be R.J. Homa making his first, first career varsity appearance on the hill. With McCaffrey now after the two-run triple by Taylor. 2-0. <laughs> well, now they can. <laughs> so if, if you didn't hear him, he said, uh, Zimmer said out in right field, because he's usually, he's usually not out here. This is like foreign territory for him. And he said, can, can the people on your stream hear me? I don't want to say anything crazy. As if Trent Bannell doesn't say anything crazy every time we're on the air. <laughs> That one's outside. If he was a little louder, it's lucky we don't get taken down for obscenities when uh, <laughs> when Trent battles in right field. <laughs> Here's the pitch. That is ball four. And Audubon is in trouble. In a lot, a lot of trouble. McCaffrey walks. Four men have gotten on base out of the five batters. The only one that is not is Braden Thorpe. There is a strike. Owen one to Tommy Popoff. He has been the X Factor for Kingsway this afternoon. Two for two, two singles. He's driven in an RBI. Pokes this one. That's going to be three for three. That one gets in the right field, and he's going to drive in another run. Scoring is Taylor. Another run's going to come around. The throw gets away from Chester. He bobbled the cutoff throw. And a two-run single for Tommy Popoff. Three RBIs on the night. It's 5 nothing. So McCaffrey came all the way around to score from first on that single and a four-run fourth inning. Puts Kingsway in a lot of business here and puts them in an incredibly good spot with a good push to the middle line. That one is outside to pop off. Inside. It's not like the defense has had that many issues, just the pitching hasn't been there. I mean, they used up probably their best arms in McCracken and Caladros in game one. Oh, wow. That's way up there. Copsetta gets in and catches it. Two down. You can hear the confidence a little bit. Runner goes. No, it hit him. Well, it's not going to matter anyway because he'll take second. Stevenson, the pinch runner for Popoff. And Nate Bott. After two strikeouts in the first and third, he now reaches on a hit by pitch. Here's Kyle Cupsey. Five-nothing Kingsway. That one's high. That's a fly ball, deep out to left. Dempsey going over, and he makes the catch. Side retired. Damage is done for Kingsway. They put up four, and it's a five-nothing game going to the bottom of the fourth here on DWB.
All right, it's time to reveal the answer of DWB Trivia Time here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Today's question was, the Montreal Expos moved to Washington, D.C. and became the Nationals in what year? A, 2005, B, 1999, C, 2012, or D, 1992? Vince, what's your guess? No, it would not be 1999. It would be A, 2005, the year that Washington became a team. Now, of course, that was not the first time that the Nationals, I shouldn't say the Nationals, but that Washington had a baseball team. They've actually had it at three different eras in baseball history. A ground ball to short. Zimmer didn't look like he ran that out all the way kind of just slowed up as he was heading to first base. One down. Three, four, and five here for the Green Wave. But there were two different versions of the Washington Senators, of course, because of our central government being down in uh, D.C. Um, there were two different ones. There was one in the 50s, basically, that then became the Minnesota Twins in 1961. And then there was another one because they moved to Minnesota and they were like, oh, well, let's just start a new team then and we'll call it the Washington Senators. So they, so they did that, wash, rinse, repeat. And then in 1972, they moved that team to Dallas or the Dallas-Fort Worth area, whatever you want to call it, now in Arlington as the Texas Rangers. And that's how that team came about. So Washington had been longing for a team for a while. Obviously, you know, they now have all four major sports markets with the Nationals, uh, Commanders, Wizards, and Capitals. Fly ball to straightaway center, and McCaffrey takes it in, two down. So Furness flies out, and here is Nick Caladros. Kelly McCaffrey, he's working hard, but he's not getting the same amount of credit for it. He only has one strikeout tonight. So Audubon's been hitting the ball in the play. They just haven't strung enough together to get anything on the board. Kingsway's just outmanned them at every turn. And of course, the four-run fourth inning does not do anyone any favors. One and one. Swing and a foul. And the pitch. That one misses low. Two balls, two strikes. If you're just joining us, Kingsway has jumped out to a 5-0 lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Galadros takes that one upstairs and the count is full. McCaffrey has surrendered one walk to Furness in what was a nine pitch at bat. But he does not do it this time. Three up, three down, and Kingsway is rolling right through Audubon. We'll see how they can keep this up in the fifth, 5-0. Tommy D's Home Design Center has opened a second location on Creek Road in Belmar. Operating in Philadelphia for over 25 years and now expanding into South Jersey, Tommy D's is the place to go for kitchen cabinets, countertops, and cabinet accessories, heavily discounted compared to big box retailers. Stop in, take a seat, and watch as our experienced kitchen designer makes the kitchen of your dreams right in front of you. Tommy D's is the best in the business for quality kitchen countertops and cabinets that fit all budgets. Call us today at 856-210-9504 or visit the new location in person on the corner of Creek Road and Harding Avenue in Belmar next to the 42 on-ramp.
Garden State Pet Center is an independently owned full service pet store. Our specialty is promoting companionship between people and animals by providing the healthiest product choices available, including all natural foods, supplements that support and relieve health issues, and innovative products for pet parents. Our goal is to provide our customers with a relaxing environment, and while we're not striving to be the biggest store on the East Coast, we're striving to be the best. No other pet store will make you feel at home like we do. At Garden State Pet Center, we view pets as members of the family. We don't believe in fast, high pressure sales but instead matching up the right pet with the right owners as you are making a lifelong commitment. Together with our team members, we would like your visit to our store to be both enjoyable and educational. Simply drop in and take a look around. View the birds, reptiles, small animals, toys, food, cages, and miscellaneous items. Learn of the services we have to offer and decide for yourself if this is the store you'd like to call your home away from home. Victor Santucci, owner of Garden State Pet Center. Visit us today at 226 South Whitehorse Pike in Audubon, New Jersey. We're open seven days a week for all of your pets' needs. All right, bottom of the fifth. Still working hard here for Audubon, but the comeback of last year definitely is something that can be written in the headlines because, you know, look, that's what happened last year. Audubon was down six. They weren't down seven, and they also, you know, they got a couple runs on the board earlier than that. Kingsway got off to a hot start early and was up by seven, and, or up by six rather, in the third inning. So who's to say now, you've only got nine outs to work with, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh. So if they were to make some noise, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to start warming up the Jets now. Line drive out to short. And Taylor makes the throw, one down. But it will be a nice start for Kingsway to go 3-0. You open the season at home. You get yourself the win on a mercy rule. You have another, yet another instant classic game versus Bishop Eustace, as you have the past three years with back-to-back walk-offs. And then you come in for a settle win. And I mean, look. Even if Kingsway hangs on to win this game, if Audubon puts a couple runs together, it's going to be a humbling win for Kingsway. Or uh, not humbling for Kingsway, but humbling for Kingsway towards Audubon, if that makes sense. Audubon has been very high on their pedestal the last couple of weeks just because, you know, they've been, they've been all saying this is the year. I mean, there's a point where you got to prove it. You know, look, they were set back a little bit. Two games got canceled, and their first game of the year was the Shaw. So you're not going to play your first conference opponent until Tuesday versus West Effort. Then you've got your unofficial non-tournament home opener on Thursday versus Heights. And then you play Delcy on Saturday. A lot of your April schedule is your out-of-conference games. Your Paul Six, your Woodstown, your Bordentown, RV on the 20th. You know, they're playing a lot of big schools. Don't be surprised if, if Audubon drops a couple of those games... You know, you might be looking at something very different come May. There's a swing and a miss. Gavin McCaffrey picks up strikeout number three. And here's the lefty cop set up. But Audubon has already burned through most of their arsenal. Four pitchers tonight, Zimmer for two, Nolan for a fraction of a frame. Then it was R.J. Homa for his, first, for his first varsity appearance, and then you had um, Jason Stockman out there. Someone's out, uh, inside, rather. But this is the championship game, and this just feels a lot more subdued. You know, when we were 
when we were out here this morning for Eustace and Cinnamons, and there were Cinnamons and parents and Eustace parents all lined up down the right field line with lawn chairs. Now there's a sporadic number of them left. And I don't know if it's just because all of Kingsway's fan base can fit in the grandstands or if the emotion is just a little subdued. But Audubon goes down in order. We'll take care of business in the sixth, seven nothing. Welcome to the home of Audubon Baseball. Here in the top of the sixth inning, Audubon down to their final half a dozen outs. As Jason Stockland still on the hill here, as Killian McCaffrey has held Audubon to five scoreless. His first task will be pop off. Three, four, and five for Kingsway in the sixth. Pop off three for three, three singles, and three RBIs. He got the first run for Kingsway in the third. It looked like Audubon was going to hold Kingsway at bay for the most part. You know, as, as it was deja vu to last year, except, you know, everything was pushed back a little bit. But now, you know, we were just talking about it over break. Last year at the Shaw, and even two years ago at the Shaw, there were zero empty seats in the home bleachers. And now there's a, there's a couple of missing spots out there, and... It just kind of makes it feel like a regular home game. And I don't know what the, I guess the score would be a reasoning for it, but it's, you know, the Ralph Shaw is something that people look forward to every single year. But the first round games seem to just have a little more life to them. I mean, the first game was Bishop Eustace 13, Cinnamonson 2. And Cinnamonson got their last two runs in the sixth in what was an eventual six inning mercy roll. And now you've got a 7-0 game in the sixth. But Tommy Popoff now four for four after that base hit to left. Stevenson runs for him again. And here's the lefty Monteith. In a good platoon situation here for Stockland. Looks back at first and the curveball misses 1-0. Stockland up to 36 pitches in his relief outing. McCaffrey up to 70. Remember, the most you can throw in a five-day span is 110. Fly ball, shallow left center. Three guys are going for it, and it drops in front of Bryce Dempsey. Base hit for Monteith. That ball just kind of hit the perfect Goldilocks zone where nobody could really go. And yet another lefty here, three in a row. But that is not, I don't think that's Nate Vaughn. No, I, that's, a, that's a new fella taking over for Bott at third base. I'll check up on that in just a second. First pitch from Stockland. 
There's a strike. Looks like number six. Yeah. Yeah, that is Kyle Shields. Shields pinch hitting for Bot. So back to back singles. This one's chopped back to the mound. Stockland couldn't cut it off. Nobody's going to get there in time. Dempsey had a late chance, but it's another infield hit. Three base hits in a row for Kingsway, and the bases are loaded. And here is Kyle Cupsey again. Cupsey 0 for 2. A ground out, a fly out, and a walk so far in this one. The infield is in. Chester and Dempsey, although the corners are in, infield is playing deep. Just trying to make sure all bases are covered here. No pun intended. Swing and a miss. And this is this is kind of where the realization comes in where Kingsway can end this game early. They can get three more runs on the board. And then if Audubon doesn't answer, they go home with a with a shortened Ralph Shaw title, but they'll get one of these runs right here on a wild pitch, 8-0. I mean, I, I, I know I've been sounding like a Debbie Downer all broadcast. I know I've been sounding that way. But you look at the score and you say, well, what happened to last year's team? What happened to the same score that we saw from years past? I mean, look, you know, Kingsway won the 2022 title by a score of seven to two. Swing and a miss. One and two. But Popoff, or rather his pinch runner Stevenson, scores in the wild pitch. And the two strike pitch from Stockland, still nobody out, fouled back. But if Audubon falls, they'll get their first loss of the season and they'll fall to one and one. Remember, they play West Deptford on Tuesday. For those wondering why we're only covering one Audubon game this next week, West Deptford's game at West Deptford will be covered by WDHS um, Channel 8. It'll be on their YouTube channel, uh, WDTV, or West Deptford TV, as there's a strikeout looking for Cupsey, one away. Here's records. But... Uh, and then Saturday's game versus Delcy, that was picked up by our good friends over at BFA Productions. They will be covering that game on their YouTube channel and also in their partnership with Game Changer. So best of luck to them. In lieu of Audubon Delcy on Saturday, we will be doing a double header. Lenape and Cherokee at 11 a.m. and then at 6.30 for our 300th DWB broadcast is PVI and Gloucester Catholic. Either way, it was going to be one day game and one night game, but when we uh, got the message that they had picked up that game, then uh, we decided to change plans. And broadcasts number 301 and 302 will be a doubleheader on Sunday, the 14th, between Cecil College and Salem Community College softball down at Pennsville Little League. And of course, college baseball still raging on. These guys are in their conference schedules now. We've got a couple of Rutgers Camden games left, including senior night on uh, Monday, or excuse me, Tuesday, uh, April 16th. That got him in the foot. So a hit by pitch by Rickards, and that loads the bases again. And still only one out. I mean, can you hear how quiet this ballpark is? There's just nothing. Except for a scrimmage, maybe. I don't think I've ever heard a Ralph Shaw final be this empty. I don't think I've ever heard that before. And not empty in terms of crowd. There's still a good crew here. Just the sound. There's... It's starting to pick up a little bit, but mostly on the visiting side. It's really unfortunate. That one's high. Like I said, I try to not be a Debbie Downer on these broadcasts. I try to lift up these guys, because look, they're high school kids. 
you know, they're playing for a state title and they're playing for their next level and their next opportunity. Just as we do. Foul ball. You know, we, we are also chasing our next opportunity. We are also chasing our next, uh, I don't know where that foul ball hit, somewhere on the street, but, you know, just as the players are chasing their next chapter, so are we. So I try to keep things objective, and when things when things aren't exactly going great, you know, you say that. Obviously, things are different with how strong of a recruiting game college baseball is, so you have to be a little more, um, a little more positive than you do at any level. Just with your wording, you have to be careful with what you say. You have to be careful with what you say at any level of the sports broadcasting world. But a foul ball, and it's a two-strike count, one out. And shockingly, with how slow this sixth inning has gone, this is only the sixth batter with Zach Brave. Rickards on first, Cupsy on second. Tommy Popoff already scored. Monteith is on third and a ground ball. Caladros has it. They throw it to the plate. He tags the bag and he is out. So everybody moves up 90 feet. And there's two down. So that is a fielder's choice. Brague is at first, Rickards moves to second, Shields moves to third, and Monteith is out at the plate. Braden Thorpe at the bottom of the order had a two had a RBI triple in the uh, rather in the fifth inning as a part of their two-run campaign. And now an 8-0 lead. Fly ball, shallow right, Chester going over, and it's foul. But what a weekend this has been. You know, let's try to let's try to lighten things up a little bit. A great weekend that we've seen so far. A seven game weekend started out with a triple header at the Camden County um, tournament and with a Rutgers Camden game in between. Had a great first game with Sterling and Gloucester, a 7-1 final. And then TCNJ took down Rutgers Camden 4-2 as game two of that triple header. Jordan Gray, the senior out of GCIT, threw a complete game. Game three was a bit of a dud, head in Township 0, Eastern 15. Another pop-up foul. And then, you know, look, hey, that was a great day one at uh, the Ralph Shaw. You know, you had that walk-off with Bishop Eustace and Kingsway, repeating history all over again. And then, uh, you know, Cinnamons and, uh, got taken down by Audubon 9-3. And uh, even for a six-run game, still a pretty impressive game by Audubon after squeaking out a two-run victory and a one-run victory versus them in the past two years. Now they had a little bit more of a solid victory. A fly ball to left center. Dempsey is there, and the side is retired. Well, Kingsway's on the brink. They just need two more runs to send us home early, but that will not happen. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Eight-nothing, Kingsway.
here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Connor Chester is the first batter, and he grounds one into the foul territory, 0 and 1. This broadcast is brought to you by Tommy D's Home Improvement. Get your dream kitchen to come true today with wholesale kitchen cabinets and countertops at heavily discounted rates. Visit today, 612 Creek Road in Belmar, next to the 42 on ramp. Here's the pitch. That one misses, 1-1. One, one. McCaffrey still in here in the sixth. I mean, he's probably a good player of the game candidate. As Chester sends one high, but playable in center for his brother, Gavin McCaffrey. He makes the catch. Chester still wanting that first varsity hit, but he will be denied again, 0 for 2. We turn the lineup over to Wiltsey at the top. Strike one. Wiltsey with a hot shot to third. Nate Bott scoops the throw, and he got him. Two down. Audubon down to their final four outs. Bill Alvaro is coming out on the hill, and if this is it for Gavin McCaffrey, he will take him out of the game. A very, very deserved ovation for Gavin McCaffrey. Five and a third innings pitched, a total of four strikeouts for him, and an incredible, incredible performance to hold Audubon to zero. We've got a pitching change here in the sixth. Kingsway leads by eight. We'll be right back. At five and two thirds. Kingsway with a new pitcher, the southpaw, and a strike. From number 13, Evan Schoeba, the lefty who did appear for an inning last uh, afternoon. Versus Trent Bannell. Audubon held to just two hits. One from Bannell in the first. And another from Wiltsey in the third. Popped up, third base side. Playable. Bot calls for it. And he makes the catch. Audubon down to their last three. Kingsway continues their dominance with just a two-hit shutout. We'll be right back after this.
Here in the top of the seventh, Kingsway looking to get some final hurrahs on the scoreboard. They were scoreless after two, both teams were. And now Audubon delivers their fifth pitcher of the night, Bryce Dempsey, in the seventh. They scored one in the third, then they put up four in the fourth, two in the fifth, and another in the sixth. That's where you get your eight nothing. Gavin McCaffrey exited after five and two thirds scoreless with just two hits allowed and four strikeouts. Fouled back. Fly ball right field side and foul. Pitch. There, strike three. Inside corner, Dempsey's got his first K. And there's one away. So here is Josh Herner. Pinch hitting for McCaffrey here. That's a base hit in the left from the pinch hitter, Herner. And they've got a one-out base runner. And now Tommy Popoff will bat again. If Gavin McCaffrey didn't have such an elite performance on the hill, you could probably give Popoff a player of the game just for the consistency factor. Four for four, four singles, nothing less, nothing more, and three RBIs. Not to mention he was McCaffrey's battery mate behind the dish all night. But now that they've got Shoiba out there, not sure if they're going to just let him ride the seventh. Here's Petch outside. Audubon's got three games coming up this week. They play West Deptford at Union Field on Tuesday the 9th. That game again will be broadcast on West Deptford TV, WT, WDTV. We'll post a link to that broadcast on our, um, on our uh, social media pages that you can find in the description of this video so that you can watch the game. Thursday will be Haddon Heights and Audubon. We will be here for that. And Saturday will be Audubon and Delcy. Our good friends over at BFA Productions have picked up that game and they will be covering that one on Saturday. Now for the two games that were postponed on opening week, Audubon and Paulsboro, which was, which was supposed to be opening day on the 2nd, has now been moved to Saturday, April 27th at 11 a.m. Now we will unfortunately not be there due to a scheduling conflict and Audubon Haddonfield, the home game that was supposed to be on the 4th, now scheduled for April 22nd. We'll let you know if we'll be covering that game in a couple of weeks. They got the one out, but nothing more. And a fielder's choice by Popoff ends his streak, but he is on base for the fifth time tonight. And Cam Stevenson will take it over. An excellent performance by Tommy Popoff. Four singles and a fielder's choice. A four for five effort with three RBIs. He has absolutely been red hot for the Dragons. So there's two outs following the Fielder's choice. And now Monteith at the dish here. Throw over to first, not in time. Cam Stevenson on first, and he takes a strike. Ian Monteith, the Camden County College commit. A strikeout, a walk, a flyout. 
and a base hit that he ended up scoring on. That one skips away from Bannell, a wild pitch that goes up the first base line, and Stevenson trots into second base. This will be the second game this year that Kingsway has won by eight runs or more. They beat Williamstown on opening day 10-0. That one is in the dirt. And now going the third is Stevenson. We've got a, a propeller plane flying above the stadium here. Get an eye on that. Yeah, there it is. This is, hmm. So somebody's not happy with the Aramark Corporation. Usually we see prop planes like that with um, banner signs down the shore. You see it a lot. Like the Wildwood Shore is like a walking advertisement. There's boats that pass by that have the giant TVs that run the ads. And you see the props with the banners on the back that have like, you know, advertisements for jet skiing or whale watching. Throw down a first base after the strikeout and the side is retired. Monteith is out on a strikeout wild pitch and Kingsway is three outs away from their first Ralph Shaw title in two years. We'll be right back, eight nothing. A new pitcher for Kingsway here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Somebody's got to shut off the music. So yeah, somebody forgot to shut off the the uh, loudspeaker. <laughs> Joey Finelli, the six foot one senior lefty, delivers a strike, and it's 0 and 1. High and away. It's Zimmer, Furness, and Calandros. Three, four, and five. And those three batters are a combined 0 for 6. Nobody has gotten on base. But Kingsway is darn near faced the minimum. They had five hitters in the first inning, and that's all they needed. They have been absolutely dominant. They had five in the first, then they went down in order in the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Audubon has actually not had a base runner since the third inning. It's 12 straight outs, but that might change. Fly ball left field, and that is caught out left. One down. Kingsway two outs away. Here is Furness. So the entire Kingsway pitching staff, McCaffrey and now Finelli, have a
have allowed three base runners, two base hits, and one walk. And that's been it. And nothing since the third. Ground ball out to third. Here we go. Throw to first in time. Two away. And Kingsway now one out away. Audubon would fall to one and one and get a silver medal on the weekend. Kingsway, who won their Ralph Shaw debut, seven to two in 2022, now look to win again over the team that they have seen three years in a row in the Ralph Shaw final. 2022, it was seven two in favor of the Dragons. Audubon upset them seven six in 2023. And now this year, Kingsway turns it around and gets some vengeance for last year's mistakes. But it's 2-0 to Nick Caladros. Finelli kicks and delivers. Popped up, first base side, going over. And it's out of play. Two and one. Like we said, our next broadcast, depending on how this eclipse turns out, it's 4 o'clock on Monday with Woodstown and Pennsville. Tuesday is going to be whoever wins that fan vote, possibly GCIT in Clearview or Absagami in Lower Cape May. Wednesday is an off day. Thursday, Haddon Heights and Audubon. Friday, Ocean County and Camden County and Juco Baseball. Here's the pitch. Floater out towards right. That's a foul ball. And here you go. Here's the last call. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. Audubon has been silent on the bases since the third. 14 up, 14 down. A combo of Gavin McCaffrey and Finelli now looking to win another Ralph Shaw title. The 2-2 grounded out to second base. This will do it. The throw to first is in time. And that will do it. A rather subdued celebration, but an eight nothing Kingsway win over Audubon gives them their second Ralph Shaw tournament victory in their three years of matching up face to face with Audubon in the title game. In what was basically a copy paste of last year's tournament matchup wise, Kingsway writes the ship and gets themselves off to a 3-0 start going into a competitive week two of the 2024 season. Obviously no post-game interviews today, but this Ralph Shaw tournament ends kind of on a dud. Nothing against Kingsway and nothing against Audubon, but that wasn't that interesting of a game. Player of the game goes to Gavin McCaffrey for 5.2 innings pitched, four strikeouts, and just two hits allowed, three base runners, and an absolute shutdown domination of the Green Wave offense. Kingsway takes this one 8-0. They beat Williamstown on a mercy rule on Friday. They took down Bishop Eustace on a walk-off. Obviously, that was the best game of the entire tournament. And today, they capture another Ralph Shaw tournament victory. Again, our next broadcast will be men uh, Monday on 4 o'clock, depending on how the eclipse goes between Woodstown and Pennsville in the Tri-County Diamond Division. From everybody here at Dan Wilkins Broadcasting, our social media coordinator, Gavin Van, I'm uh, sorry, social media coordinator, Anthony De Palma, our graphics crew, Gavin Van Rell and Caleb Lane, my wonderful producer, Vincent Folk. I'm Dan Wilkins. We will see you tomorrow, sunshine or not. Have a good one, folks.